So yeah, as it generally goes in real estate, the past six months have both brought some good and some bad news for different projects that we're working on. But for the bad news, well, we're treating these, of course, as learning experiences that seriously cannot be learned in books. You have to learn them the hard way on your own. So here's an update on my real estate portfolio. Hey, what's going on, everyone? It's Griffin here, and it's been way too long since I've made an update on my rental property portfolio, which I am still very much working on behind the scenes, but have really made much dedicated content about it recently because I've been focusing the channel's content on you know some other topics but I know a lot of you are really interested in keeping up with really what's just going on in my real estate portfolio so today's video will answer all of those questions and as always if you enjoy the content of today's video please don't hesitate to leave a like it really helps my channel out all right let's do it okay so starting off with a project that was at the forefront of my real estate content back near the end of 2020 well, we have the first triplex to fiveplex conversion project that we have now completed, fully rented out, and is now stabilized with a fixed CMHC loan for the next five years. As a quick recap here, this project was initially a triplex with a massive middle unit that spanned from the main floor to the basement, meaning it had like six bedrooms and two kitchens with that unit being rented out for only 800 bucks a month. So with the property being in an area of the city though, that was zoned for up to five units, we saw the opportunity in this project. So we picked it up for 380 grand and got to work. Now it did take over a year to get all of the permitting in place for various different reasons that did hold us back. But regardless, a very long time to wait. Luckily though, it was fully rented out and cash flowing while we did wait for the project to get approved by the city. So from start to finish though, it took around two years to get this property fully completed and then stabilized. But boy, did we ever learn a lot throughout this process in terms of working with the city, working with architects and other professionals as well, all of which is now very much helping us out with current projects. That being said, high level round numbers on the deal. Well, we took advantage of CMHC's new financing program called MLI Select in English or APH Select in French. It's the same program. And essentially what this does though, is it allows for the financing and refinancing of properties with more lenient terms and longer amortization periods. But to gain full access to this program though, well, it's on a point-based system where you have to hit certain criteria to then be able to unlock a higher debt to value ratio and longer amortization period up to 50 years in this case. So anyways, I'm not gonna bore you much longer with this, but to get the points, well, you have to either make the building more eco-friendly or offer affordable rents or even a mixture of both. So we did that and we were able to get full points for maximum financing terms. All right, so high level numbers for the deal here, the building evaluator gave us a value of 1.1 million for the final product, but the CMHC only allowed for a loan up to roughly 775k which honestly is fine there's equity left in the deal and we're planning on keeping the building indefinitely anyways now the initial mortgage loan though that we were carrying was only 370 grand and the project itself cost roughly two hundred thousand dollars all in between soft and hard costs meaning we were able to cash out roughly two hundred thousand dollars on this deal which is being directly used to finance the construction of our other project in the portfolio. So let's look at the next one right now. All right, so the next project we'll be covering here is one that's currently in the process of being built. So same concept as the last one. This was a triplex when we initially bought it. It actually did have a fourth unit in the basement though that wasn't a legal unit, but our goal was to scrap that unit anyways, get the permit from the city to subdivide the basement into two units and then have a highly profitable and legal five unit building on our hands to keep long-term in the portfolio as well. So again, it took quite a while to get our hands on the permit for this property, but it did eventually come through. And now we just know that a permit takes around a year to get. That's just standard at this point and expectations have to be set for supporting running costs if necessary. But luckily this property was also fully leased out the entire time that we waited. So no huge losses here on this one, which isn't the case for the next two deals that we'll be covering, unfortunately. But yeah, so as it stands right now, the project is around halfway done and 
and by the time that this video comes out the drywall will probably all be installed which is great and we're hoping it'll be at least by May 1st but as with all construction projects no real expectations on when the project will be completed. Seriously just don't do it. Now in regards to the numbers on the deal though things aren't yet finalized but it'll be very similar to the past deal that we just spoke about where we're using the CMHC's MLI Select program this time focusing on the eco side of things though so better insulation adding heat pumps and so on and this should give us financing that will allow for again roughly around 200 grand worth of cash out after paying off the current mortgage in place and the builder's construction costs. So really exciting and having learned so much about the process for this type of deal, this is becoming really our bread and butter where we now know what to expect and what challenges can arise and so on, which I wish we would have had this type of knowledge though before purchasing the next two deals. Moving on, one of the most important things I would do as a new investor is systemize my deal analysis process to make it quicker and more thorough, along with managing my tenants and properties in a more efficient manner, which is exactly what today's video sponsor, Landlord, is here to help you accomplish. Landlord is an all-in-one portfolio and property management suite that's great if you're a current landlord looking to better keep track of and drill down on your portfolio's performance, just as much as if you're a new investor looking to get an edge on analyzing deals in your area. This is made super simple with their deal and flip analyzer tools that are integrated integrated right into the platform, let's take a look at how you can use these to your advantage. So to analyze a rental property deal, it's super simple. You start off with inputting the property's address, followed with other valuable information about the income, projected expenses, and even projected renovation costs of the property. As you input values, projected returns and metrics will update in real time, giving you a quick but detailed idea of the deal's financial potential. Once you're done, you can save the property analysis and export the values in a comprehensive report if you feel like it. And hey, if you do end up acquiring property to start your very own portfolio or already have some rentals under your belt, Landlord is a great platform as well to keep track of your portfolio's growth and key performance indicators. You can easily link your bank account and keep track of rental income, expenses, tenants, and dozens of other relevant portfolio values that you would expect from a portfolio tracking system. So make sure to check out Landlord today if you want to better analyze potential deals using the link down below in this video's description. And I got them to offer you a three month free trial to their premium account using my link exclusively. So if you want to support the channel, please check them out and create a free account with my link. Let's get back to the video. Okay, now arguably the most difficult project that we've undertaken to date. This is a project where honestly, almost everything has gone wrong. And as a result, we've been heavily supporting it through the cash flows from our other properties, basically since we bought it. So I'm talking about this deal right here that I made a few videos about in the past. And since then, really nothing much has happened. And we tried doing some work to it, but for reasons I won't disclose in this video, the work site got shut down and we've now just been sitting on it and supporting the costs ever since, while also having sunk some additional capital into it for soft costs to try and get this project off the ground. Now, the silver lining though, is that this property sits on a double lot with unlimited zoning, which is why we saw opportunity, but we just did a few things wrong that led to where we are right now that hopefully you can learn from and avoid in your projects. First off, we rushed to get all the tenants out and strip the property to try and be proactive and save time while getting the permitting in place and so forth. But the permit has, of course, taken way longer than expected, nothing new there. And in the meantime, well, it sits empty and stripped down to the studs. So we can't even rent it out temporarily if we wanted to, which would have massively offset supporting costs. Luckily, we just got done with the plans from the architect though, which do look amazing and the goal is now to obtain the permit at least in 2024 so that we can finally build what should end up becoming a large and downright luxurious five unit building comprised of three two bedroom units and two three bedroom units 
So it'll cost roughly a million bucks to build and once all is said and done, but that property will be a phenomenal addition to the portfolio. We'll be in it for roughly $1.3 million, but it'll be worth closer to 1.6 when completed. So a really nice spread there in the short term and then long term, this is the type of property that will appreciate massively over the next 10, 15 years because the location is fantastic. So that pretty much sums up the deal that's burning the biggest hole in our pocket right now. But honestly, it is what it is. I'm looking at this as being just an expensive lesson that at the end of the day won't be a huge deal anyways once the project is off the ground and fully stabilized. And we'll now be in a position to avoid these delays and costs in the future. Okay, and finally, the fourth property that's currently in the portfolio, we have another triplex that was purchased roughly a year and a half ago at this point, where similar to the past property that we just spoke about, it is also being an agonizing process trying to obtain the permit to convert this property into a five unit building for a couple of reasons. First of all, and note this down, even though a property might be in an area that's zoned for more units than are currently in place, well, the way that those units interact with certain other aspects of the zoning laws and requirements might require further approval from what's known as a planning committee at the city to approve what's known as a minor derogation. An example would be say that yes, the property zoning allows for five units on the lot, which was the case here, but the required parking spaces needed have to be 1.5 spaces per unit in this area of the city, meaning eight spaces in in this case, but the size of the lot doesn't allow for eight full parking spaces. So you have to go and ask for a minor derogation, which takes a lot more time and might ultimately not even be approved. That's the exact situation that happened here. It took around eight months to get this all completed because the lot could only accommodate for three parking spaces instead of eight, which was the minimum required amount when converting to a five unit building. And for the record, these are the types of bottlenecks in municipalities that happen behind the scenes and contribute to the housing crisis. But I'm a broken record at this point, constantly pointing out these inefficiencies. Long story short though, it took eight months and they did approve it. So that was great. But from here, the pain only really just started because to emit the permit, the city needs to verify as well that the sewer capacity is able to withstand those extra units on the system. And because this is an older area of the city, they for some reason aren't able to tell us if it's feasible or not. And we've been waiting for over six months now, following up bi-weekly. And at the time of filming this video, the consensus is that we'll get an answer in October, 2024. Just think of how insane that is. So anyways, this was a problem that we didn't even know existed, infrastructure capacity, before buying this property. And you bet that now it's one of the first things on our list of due diligence when looking at the deal's potential. Luckily though, the property is being fully leased the entire time that we've held it, and we've even been able to increase some of the rent. So it has only cost around $300 negative each month to hold it, which isn't all that bad. And in the meantime, well, it's appreciated significantly more anyways in that area by well over hundred grand. So for now, we're deciding if we'll hold on till October or offload it, uh, if we can get a price that we're happy with. Like I said previously though, we bought this property on lines of credit. So any return that we make on it, considering all costs and interest paid is an infinite return anyway. So it's a win-win. All right. So that pretty well sums up the update on my real estate portfolio and the properties that are currently in it. And truth be told, although we just completed a project and we're halfway done a second project, which feels great, some of the mistakes that we made have definitely contributed to a slower overall growth than I had initially expected. But the good news is that through making these mistakes, well, we're better refining how we we go about sourcing deals and then executing on their development. And none of this can be learned really through books and seminars. You really just need to learn it yourself. So if you're interested in learning more about real estate investing though, and following my journey, make sure to check out the dozens of other videos that I have on my channel in my real estate investing playlist. And also check out my course over on Udemy that covers all of the steps that we've taken to now invest in and offload over a dozen properties over the past five years. Check that out if you're interested. So thanks a lot for watching and I will see you in the next one.